Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're just going to go over a couple of bar clearances. Uh, for those that have only got maybe one chainsaw, it's probably not a big issue for you. But uh, I've got quite a lot of chainsaws, all different bar sizes, all different gauge sizes. So I need to keep on top of it and make sure that my bars and, and, and everything else, everything's in good condition and this isn't worn out. If you've got loose chains, bars are worn out, chains are getting, sprockets are worn out, chains are going to jump off you can be injured all sorts of things can go wrong you know cutting crooked for lack of maintenance the people out there that just put oil and uh fuel in them they're the ones that's going to have all those problems that you hear about oh this isn't working that's not working for those people that generally take a little bit of care after they go out and cut and do a timely maintenance on their chainsaws make sure that they clean it they check everything normally those saws will last a lot longer the people who abuse their saws are people that will yeah they'll generally have all the problems if you keep your chain razor sharp then your saw will need less energy to cut through and it'll cut through much more efficiently It'll put less wear and tear on the bar, on the chain, and every other moving component down the line right up to the piston. So the sharper you keep your chain, the less wear and tear from the nose tip to the throttle. So you've got four different sizes uh, of chain out there. 043 gauge, that drive link is 1.1 millimeter in thickness 050 gauge is 1.3 millimeter in thickness a drive link on that one 058 gauge is 1.5 millimeter thickness on the drive link and 063 gauge is 1.6 millimeters thickness on the drive link or you can say 40 uh 43 thou 50 thou 58 thou or 63 thou there's different two ways of saying it it's the same sort of thing now, with those measurements, roughly most chain manufacturers are giving you about 10 thou clearance. That roughly equates to about 0.25 of a millimetre. You need to have that sort of gap because for two reasons. If you don't have any gap, the chain will be too tight. It'll take more horsepower and things will wear out quicker. So you need a reasonable type gap in there. Also, if sawdust builds up too much in the guide rail, uh, you could jam, and I've had that happen to me where I've been cutting wet timber and it's jammed up, all the sawdust and that's got in the bar rail and just jammed it up. So you've got to have that working clearance. And it, as I said, it's roughly 10,000. What I have found out from different manufacturers that the bar gaps, let's take a 063 gauge. You've got a drive link of approximately 1.6 millimetres and you've got a bar gap of approximately 1.75 thereabouts. Some could even go slightly getting closer to the 1.8 millimetre. So it can vary a little bit. So just remember that, that it's the numbers that I'm quoting you can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but they're pretty close. But that clearance that I mentioned before, the 10 thou clearance from the drive link that sits into the the channel of the bar that's the clearance it's pretty generic generally speaking a chain in a brand new bar will move less than a millimeter from side to side probably about half a mil when it starts moving around about a millimeter it's time either two things have happened there depends how many chains have gone through the bar also depends on, on uh, how much of that uh, tooth is left on the chain. 
the drive links will wear much slower than what the bar will because I'm roughly getting about six chains to a bar because I'm pretty, as I said before, I keep them razor sharp. I don't put much pressure on the bar. I flip my bar every single time I do maintenance on the, uh, I sharpen my chains by grinder in most cases because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sharpening quite a lot. In that case, I've got to take the bar off and then I flip it over. So every single time that the chain gets sharpened, it's getting even wear on both sides. There's people out there that don't flip their bars and wonder why one side's worn out. And that's one of the reasons why. If you constantly flip it over with every sharpening, you'll get even wear and you'll get much uh, better life out of them. I'm getting, as I said, I'm getting at least six chains uh, to one bar. Okay, so we've just explained the different gauges out there. The other thing that can happen, you've got to be really careful of this. These two bars here, the still is 043 gauge. That's off an MS-170. This is a Ryobi. They're both 14 inch. This is 50 gauge, and that's 043 gauge. They're the same. So let's say that we've got two different... Uh, I don't know if they're exactly the same links. 52 drive links uh, on that one. Uh, I'll just try and look up my chart here to see whether the MS-170, MS-170, here it is. It's got 50 drive links. Uh, uh, yeah, so this has got 52, so yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that. This is, in other words, that means that this must be slightly longer. It is too, look at that. Isn't that interesting? This is also another thing when we talk about bars. This is called a 14-inch bar, and this is called a 14-inch bar. And have a look. You've got two drive links in length. So, yeah, be, be aware of that. I've noticed that before. Some manufacturers give you a better bang for buck. And, yeah. Anyway, we're not here to discuss uh, uh, what I was trying to say. Let's just say that this... 52 drive links and just say this one was 52 drive links so exactly the same length but one's 43 043 gauge and the other one is 050 gauge you could quite innocently make a mistake and put the smaller gauge into the larger bar and you could do that on 058 gauge if you had say so Let's just say that we had, this is a 20-inch bar. Let's just say that it was 050 gauge and we had a 063 gauge. You could quite easily put the, or 058 gauge, I should say. There's not a lot of difference. You're only talking 5 thou. So you're talking 58 thou to 63 thou. So it's quite easy to put a 58 thou uh, chain, provided it's the same drive link. So if it was 72, 20 inch roughly has 72 drive links. So it's quite easy to do that and make that mistake. I actually wrote on here, I actually measured that a, yeah, we've got that the drive links are 1.5 millimetres in, in width and the bar gap is 1.75 millimetres. And so that gives a, a roughly a clearance of, uh, yeah, if you work that out, that's 25.25 of a millimetre. Yeah. So 0.25 of a millimetre, that's uh, 10 thou. Yep, that's 10 thou, as what I said before. So I wrote it down. I probably wrote it down on this one too. Drive link is 1.2, yeah, 1.25 millimetre. See, normally the drive link of a uh, of 050 is normally 1.3. This is 1.25. Bar gap is 1.5, so you've got a clearance of 1.25. So Look, just remember that there are variations uh, but from manufacturer to manufacturer. But as I said before, depends on how much play you've got. If you've got more than a millimetre, you need to look into it. How do you look into it? Two ways. You can measure your drive link with a digital vernier. Uh, you can also use a set of feeler gauges to put into your bar to see what gap it is. No point doing that when the bar's all worn out because you need to know 
what the gap in the bar is from brand new. And if you don't know that, uh, then sometimes you're going, oh, well, it's got this gap. Same as the drive link. There's no point measuring it when it's worn if you don't know what it was when it was brand new. And as I said, from one manufacturer to another manufacturer, it can vary. So what I found out, and it's it's the way that I, I check everything, is that if it moves more than a millimetre, then I need to check. But prior to checking, I found out that, oh, does anybody make a bar gauge? And a bar gauge, yeah, if I, if I grab these feeler gauges, I've got to get a combination of three or four different uh, feeler gauges to, to fit the one bar. So, yeah, it, I, I could find like I need two or three uh, feeler gauges to fit that one. Then I've got to change it for that one, change it for the other one, so and so on and so on. That gets a little bit messy. And then I don't feel like even checking. So what I decided I'd come up with was I made my own feeler gauges, if you would, out of stainless steel. There they are there. So I've got 043 gauge, 050 gauge, and 063. I don't have 058 because I don't have any 058 bars, so there's no point making them. Now, it took me quite a while to find, I had to go through my stainless steel bin to see whether I could find something that would fit in there snug. I didn't want something that would fit in there loose because loose tells me nothing. If it fits in there nice and snug, then I know the bar is okay. So this bar's been used. It's a still off my MS-170. I've got a 16-inch bar on there at the moment. So being 043 gauge, we'll put the 043 gauge in there. Nice and snug. You can move it. Oh. But it's nice and snug. And it's a lot looser on this side. A lot looser. You can move it real easy. So now that's interesting, isn't it? Now it sits in there on its own. And you put it on this side, it falls out. So one side is different than the other. And and using this is much better than trying to find three, four feeler gauges. Or physically, that is not going to change. The thickness of that stays the same. So I know that if I put this into my 043 gauge bars and it fits just nice and snug, that it's okay. If it's nice and sloppy, then I've got a bit of wear in it. So the next bar is the 050 gauge. So that's that one there, the 050. And we'll check both sides. Yeah, a little bit nice and snug in here. You can move it, but it's a little bit tight, a little bit looser here. This is what I notice when you, when you check your bar. Some parts can be tight, a little bit tight there, a little bit looser there. So you can move it there. A very, very, very interesting, that. This bar here is another 050 gauge. Brand new, and it moves easier than that one. Now, isn't that interesting? Look at that. That moves really free. So there's brand new, and there's used, and the gauge moves easier in the brand new one. You would have thought it would have been the other way around. That's why I made the gauges. There's the 063 gauge. So... This is a little bit, feels a bit snug in there. It's certainly not loose. It was the closest I could find a piece of metal that would fit in there, stainless steel. So uh, it's just a little bit on the tight side. So that's okay. I know that. And if I was to put that into one of my 20 inch bars that had uh, 063 gauge, it was a bit sloppy, then I know I've got wear in the bar. So that's all I designed them for and made them for that I could use these finger type gauges uh, just to check my bar to make sure that they're not worn out. Same as I made these, I made a whole, whole set of uh, depth gauges and the whole reason of making these depth gauges was so that not use them and file over the top of them because they're soft metal, uh, they're stainless steel. They're used to check. So if it sits up in my garage where all my chainsaw stuff is, rather than uh, grab out, it's just a matter that if, if I was doing a, a 3.8 chain, so this one here is a standard 3.8 uh, gauge, depth gauge, progressive depth gauge, I can put that on there and check. If it needs attention then 
I will use the correct uh, still uh, progressive depth gauge. It's the same thing. While I've got the bar on the bench, if I reach to grab my gauges, I know what gauge is, and I can just check the bar just for where to see how it's going. If it needs attention, then I can do it. So purely these depth gauges and bar gauges are just there for checking purposes only. The bar gauges is much better than constantly reaching into the feeler gauges, trying to figure out, oh, I better look up the chart to see what the bar gap is. And that's the only reason I did it, for simplicity and ease of maintenance. So when I want to check my bars now, I don't have, as I said, I don't have 058 because I don't have any 058 bar, so there was no point making one. That's probably all I could say about that at the moment. Uh, it's just another a tip out there. If you don't want to uh, do any bar maintenance or you don't have any feeler gauges, that's fine. Uh, if you don't do maintenance on your chainsaw, then don't go grizzling and complaining when everything's not working properly. And that's about all I can say for those people out there that avoid maintenance. Avoid maintenance in the end will come back to bite you because... Your chainsaw won't last as long as the person that services it. Look, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, bye for now.